A few weeks ago, Consumer Reports put out a video talking about Tesla's Navigate on Autopilot. If you haven't seen the video, I can't really recommend it. It's not a great video. It has a lot of inaccuracies, uh, and it's uh, pretty dramatic in my opinion. They talk about the car cutting off other cars, making bad lane change decisions, um, being more nervous when Navigate on Autopilot is enabled. But you need to be ready because some of the changes that it, lane changes that it's made are a little bit frightening. And it didn't really sit well with me because I use Navigate on Autopilot every day. I commute 70 miles a day for work. And while it's definitely not perfect, I'm not always happy with the performance. Uh, it's never something that makes me nervous. And it's not something I feel like I have to pay extra attention to. Uh, just the same normal amount of attention you should be paying. You know, when you're driving, you should probably be paying attention. So their main complaints were that it was cutting people off. If there's a car behind you that is approaching quickly, mm. um, very often it'll just kind of pull right in front of this vehicle and... Um, you know, if you don't stop it, you have to go and, you know, cancel out this thing um, and be ready, uh, you might cut someone off really badly. It, it, it actually was a little unsettling how many times I had to kind of crank the wheel a little bit. So to, don't do that. See, don't, I don't do, do that. that. That they had to pay attention to their car driving. You have to be this watchful eye. That should be pretty standard when you're driving a car, but that's okay. Um, and that it made their driving experience less pleasant. This actually right. adds this whole level of stress. Yeah, uh, your job becomes that you're, you're not, you're monitoring the car. They almost made it seem like, you know, the car comes and gets you and you have no choice. Like this car is gonna drive away with you and there's nothing you can do about it. Where's this car taking me? No! To be fair, I'm sure they know a lot about cars. This is what they do for a living. They talk about cars, they review cars, but they don't live with every car every day, right? So they're not gonna know as much as uh, me or you, who's who owns the car and is driving it every day, has more experience with it. And so it just didn't sit well with me having three people sit down, talk about their poor experience to navigate on autopilot when, what did they test drive at one time? They gave all these examples of navigate on autopilot cutting people off or almost cutting people off, having to intervene, having to disable it. But they didn't show any video of it, um, which is strange only because they show clips of them driving the Model 3. They show like a following car behind their Model 3 that they're testing with Navigate on Autopilot. And they show the Model 3 covered in GoPros. But then they don't show any footage of any of these things happening. You know, one time they talk about the car passing on the right, which, you know, it shouldn't do. Um, and they show a clip of the car kind of gently getting in the right lane. Well, maybe don't let it do that if you don't want it to pass on the right. There's some other misinformation in their video, which I, I don't think is they're doing on purpose, of course. But, you know, one of the things they mentioned is that Tesla claims the car can see uh, blinkers and brake lights. Now, Tesla tells us that this, this can see brake lights. It can see turn signals. I've never seen that anywhere I searched. I cannot find that anywhere. I actually commented on their video and asked, do you have a source for that? Um, and I don't know. I, that's not true as far as I'm concerned. The car cannot see blinkers. It can't see stoplights. It can just see the speed of the car in front of you. And if somebody's starting to come into your lane, but there have been times I've hit my brake to let somebody in because they put their turn signal on. My car doesn't know. My car doesn't see the turn signal. I'll hit my brake, intervene, and then turn autopilot back on after they've merged. So I wanted to talk about Navigate on Autopilot how it actually works, in my experience, again, using it every day to go to work, you have to, first of all, you have to buy the car, right? It's not like you have no choice. So you're probably doing a good amount of research before you buy it. So you've almost certainly heard of Autopilot. And when you buy the car, they do now come standard with Autopilot, but that's not what Consumer Reports is talking about. They're talking about Navigate on Autopilot. Specifically, their complaints are the speed-based lane changes or the navigation-based lane changes. So if your exit's coming up and your car has to change a couple lanes to get over, um, that's what they're complaining about. So again, when you first buy the car, you don't even have that option unless you pay an extra $6,000 for it. Now, if you were watching this video in a couple months, that price may have changed. But as of making this video, you have to pay an additional $6,000 just to even have the option to turn it on, okay? So let's check out the settings for Navigate on Autopilot and how much you actually have to enable to use that feature and after enabling all that, if you're not happy with the performance, you can just turn it off. It's as simple as that. Again, Navigate on Autopilot is not perfect. It makes mistakes. So for example, 
I'll see a gap where I'm like, all right, I want to change lanes coming up. There's a gap here I think I should get over. And the car won't do that. It, it doesn't have foresight. It just kind of looks around and when it's time to change lanes, it decides if it's safe or not. If there's a car coming up, I've actually had it where the my car starts to make a lane change and then a car in the lane I'm getting into is coming up really quickly. And my car actually decides, never mind, I'm going to go back to my lane. All happened very smoothly. Um, I didn't feel in danger at all. I would not describe it as stressful. Yes, you're paying attention. Yes, you have to watch what the car's doing, make sure it's not doing any stupid lane changes. But I've never had it try to do a lane change that I'm, you know, grabbing the wheel and then kind of panicking and, and taking over. Also mentioning that, if your hands are on the wheel like they're supposed to be, it's really easy to override these lane changes. If it starts to change lanes and you don't want it to, you simply just hold the steering wheel and it can't. It's not going to pull the steering wheel out of your hands. Like all my videos, timestamps will be below. I'm going to start off with looking at the settings of Navigate on Autopilot, and then I'm going to take it out for a drive. I'm going to go pretty far. I'll record as much as I can. I'll share that with you. If anything happens that I don't like, I'll share it. If my biggest complaint is it's too timid. It would never cut anybody off. I've never had it cut anyone off. I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. It is way too timid. I want it to be more aggressive. I want it to cut. No, I don't want it to cut anyone off. But I almost am like, I wish you would kind of push it a little more. Um, when the car is like puts a turn signal on, it's just kind of hanging out. I'm like, all right, let's, let's go. I'm ready. So that's my biggest complaint, um, about Navigate on Autopilot right now is too timid. So let's take a look at the settings. And then if you're not interested, you know, skip ahead, you can see actually Navigate on Autopilot working, um, and see what we actually have to do to use this feature. When you first buy a Tesla and you go into the settings, this is what you're greeted with. You can see the Autopilot settings. Everything is turned off. Auto steer, which is where it'll just keep you in your lane, is off. So if you buy a Tesla, you don't even know anything about autopilot, you don't go in the settings, you can't even turn autopilot on. It won't work. You have to come in here. You have to enable this. So I'm going to turn it on. And you're met with this message. So again, this is just staying in your lane and keeping your speed. This is not making lane changes automatically. So once you accept this, now you can use autopilot. So you can be driving. It'll stay in your lane and it'll keep speed. That's it. It's not going to change lanes. It's not going to do anything else. Now, once this is enabled, you can then enable navigate on autopilot. So let's turn that on. You get another warning, but you are going in the settings and turning it on. That's kind of the point of what I'm showing you here. So I say, yes, I agree. After that, I've already turned two things on. I now have to go into this setting, customize navigate on autopilot. Enable at the start of every trip is set to no. So again, I've turned on navigate on autopilot, but when I get on the highway and I turn autopilot on, this feature is not on until once I'm in autopilot, you'll see a little message in the top left. You can turn it on as you're driving. So I can say if I want, enable at the start of every trip. So I personally, I do set that to yes. Speed-based lane changes. There's a lot of confusion here where people think this is how aggressively the car will make lane changes. And I think actually Consumer Reports may have mentioned this as well. The car will always make a lane change in the same manner. It'll slowly switch lanes when it's safe to do so. If you put it on Mad Max... The car isn't going to quickly get into the next lane. It's just going to change lanes more frequently. Require lane change confirmation. So again, what have we enabled now? Three separate things. Still, the car will not change lanes without you confirming. But again, I like to use it, so I set this to no. I don't have to confirm. Another warning message. This does not make your vehicle autonomous, which again, Consumer Reports never said that anyone would, should be confused by that, but they didn't really talk about how much it takes to even use this feature to then go and complain how stressful and whatever it was to them. So I say, yes, I keep this on no. Now, when you turn that on, every time it's going to change lanes, it doesn't just randomly change lanes. You get a little message that pops up here. And by default, you can see it slid over here. It'll both vibrate your steering wheel and it'll chime to let you know that it's going to do that, and then it'll do it. I personally keep mine on Chime. You can turn this off, but again, you get another warning message telling you the car will change lanes at any time, blah, blah, blah. So now after we've set three or four different settings, now finally the car can use Navigate on Autopilot when I turn it on. All right, you can see that's a lot of settings we had to adjust just to enable the feature. We're still not even driving the car yet. So once we start driving and then we turn on autopilot on the highway, this doesn't work on local roads, it only works on highways, then the car can start changing lanes on its own after, according to my settings, it gives me a chime and lets me know it's about to do it. So let's get on the road and see how Navigate on Autopilot does. All right, so we're testing out Navigate on Autopilot 
perfect timing. The car wants to change lanes. I have a few people in my way here. I'm just going to let the car keep attempting it. The car is speeding up, slowly merges over. So you can see there were two people in my way. The car didn't attempt to change lanes at all. It waited for those two cars to pass. And then when there was a clearing, it sped up and got in front of the person behind me. So I have my speed limit set at 75. Um, it will probably get out of this lane in a second because we're in the, the left lane. So there's that. Now the car's gonna get out of the passing lane. Okay, and we're all set. Now the person behind me can pass me. Okay, another lane change to pass this truck. And there we go. So the person that was in that lane uh, decided to let me in. They gave me enough space and the car got over. So I should put this camera up so you can see what's behind me. The cars in this view are closer than, than they look here. I'm going from Ann Arbor to Troy. Um, and then later today I'll be going from Troy to uh, home in Fenton. Okay, so we got kind of a busy spot coming up here. Um, there are two lanes opening to the left and just a lot of cars, so we'll see if the car can handle that okay. I'm also on software version 2019.16.3.2. This is the long range all wheel drive Model 3 and I have hardware 2.5 and I have enhanced autopilot. I don't have full self driving and I don't have the basic AP. Okay, so this guy got in front of us and is going slower. So now the car decides to get in the faster lane. No problem. There's actually not too much traffic. I was thinking, you know, there'd be more cars getting in our way and everything, but uh, so far it's been fine. Okay, so we're gonna get to the left again. Again, this person's going slower than our set speed of 80. And no problems there. I always have a hand on the wheel. I keep it in the bottom left of the steering wheel. It's just my way to easily rest my hand on the wheel. Autopilot doesn't nag me. It knows that I'm here. It knows I'm paying attention. And I can just kind of relax and watch the car. Okay, so you can see here ahead of time, the car is telling me there's an upcoming lane change because we're gonna uh, take an exit up here. So it's three and a half miles away, but it's telling me I need to be in this far right lane. I can start to move over if I want, or I can wait for the car. So here's kind of a more poor decision by the car. It was speeding up and then chose to slow down to get behind this guy. It really wasn't a big deal, but moves over, uh, work, works perfectly. So it's still indicating here we need to move over two more lanes. Um, if I'm driving, I usually start to move over with about two miles left, um, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, our next lane change is here. We're gonna get behind this guy. So that worked nicely, slowed down, maybe a little more than I would have, but didn't get in anybody's way. I can show you, you know, the rear view, but then you can't see kind of what the car's doing up here, so I'm gonna keep switching between those. So now it wants to change lanes. I'm gonna hit the accelerator, it shouldn't be braking there, so there's like the biggest mistake I've seen so far. And now we're getting in front of this person. And that's good. So, yeah, that wasn't a very good maneuver. Um, hit the brake way too much there. Okay, so we're going to take an exit up here. So we're changing lanes. Nobody's there. We're taking an exit up here, and I know that the car doesn't do very well with this. Uh, so that guy's good. Um, so we'll see how it handles it today. So this exit that we're taking coming up, I know the car doesn't handle very well. It has two exit lanes, and we need to be in the left exit lane. And I think the car is going to put us in the right exit lane. Okay. Yep, I need to do this one because we need to be in this left lane. I'm not going to let the car blow by all those people um, and then try to merge with them. I, I don't know. I assume it would turn its turn signal on and then try to move over here, but that's pretty rude. Um, and the car is not full self-driving. So this is a point where I need to take over. Uh, I took control, got where I needed to be, and then put it back in autopilot. Okay, so the car's trying to change lanes here, but nobody is letting me in. Oh, yeah, look at that. We did cut that guy off, but the car fixed it. 
turn signal still on, and then the next person decided to let us in. So that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, again, I wouldn't normally leave it that long. That's kind of the thing, is in that situation, I just would have canceled it. And that's you know exactly what Tesla tells you, is you just gotta pay attention. So I suppose if you leave the car unmonitored and you don't interfere, it may start to cut someone off. But then the car did ditch that uh, lane change. I didn't pull back into my lane, the car did all of that. Okay, so we're about to get back on the highway. I can actually turn autopilot on right now. Um, this is normal autopilot. Navigate on autopilot where it will make lane changes is that single line, and you get that chime to let you know. So it automatically transitioned to that when it knew it was getting back on the highway. So you can see we have a lot of traffic coming up up here. We'll see how the car handles it. Oh, I'll click that. I need to speed up. So no cars in our way. No big deal. So smooth, easy transition onto the highway. We're about to get off again. We're just on here for a couple miles, and then that's all my highway driving uh, for this route. Um, so yeah, it went pretty well. We did almost cut someone off and then the car bailed. Uh, I guess you could, we'll say we cut him off. We cut that guy off, uh, but the car bailed and went back into its lane and, and no big deal. So we'll let the car do this exit. Clear, nobody's in our way, shouldn't be a problem. Actually just got a software update, 2019.20.1. Uh, so this will be my first time using Navigate on Autopilot on this version. The only listed changes were improvements to dog mode. Uh, so it shouldn't change the way that Navigate on Autopilot behaves, but it may. So like always, you do have to pay attention. So I will turn it on. So Navigate on Autopilot is enabled. We're going to merge onto the highway here. Let's see if it handles it. Okay, did that fine. There's no cars or anything in our way, so we don't really have to worry about it. So I'm heading from Troy and I'm going home to the Fenton area. Okay, so we're going a little slow here. I would expect it to want to change lanes to get into the faster lane. Okay, so now the car will not cross over a solid line. So since there's a solid line to the left of me, the car doesn't see any available lanes over there, so it won't switch lanes. All right, so we're going a little slow. The car's not changing lanes. I'm gonna tell it to change lanes. Please change lanes. There you go, so it's doing the lane change. Nobody's in the way. Uh, shouldn't be very eventful. And oh, it wants to change back. I forgot our exit's coming up. So let's let it change back. Turns the turn signal on. It's going to slow down and get back behind this person. So that's <laughs> something I like about Navigate on Autopilot. Uh, it's hard to miss your exit because the car is not going to let you. It's going to remind you it needs to get over. So we need to get over. And nobody in the way. Now this exit is going to turn into two separate directions. We got east and west. We're going west, so the car should take us that way. Turn signal's on, thanks to the car. Takes the exit, and we're going. So speed limit was reduced. I'm gonna bump it back up. So now we do have to move over a couple lanes here, so this will be a pretty good test. Okay, so first lane change. That's good, and then we need to move over again. The car knows. Perfect, no problem. So we got a cop on our left. Uh, Want to slow down, but everybody's going faster than me, so it should be all right. We got to get on that. Tesla needs to recognize the police and slow down. So the car should want to get out of the passing lane now, but it's not doing it. So I'm just gonna use the turn signal and move over. I'm not sure why. Sometimes it seems to almost kind of get stuck in the lane it's in. So another aspect of the automatic lane changes is that the car will not do the lane change unless your hands are on the wheel. So here's another lane change. Put my hand on the wheel. Now it changes lanes. All right, I expect the car to want to change lanes. I thought it was going to with this truck coming up, but it's gonna do it now, so it's clear. Now there's no way to know if it saw the truck coming up and was waiting or it was just a coincidence. So you can see that I've used this enough I know, I can tell when the car's gonna change lanes. You know, it's usually not a surprise. Once the speed starts slowing down, or there's an open lane, or we're in the passing lane, I can just kinda tell, okay, I should be ready, the car's gonna wanna change lanes here soon. Okay, I'd expect another lane change here. 
because this truck is slowing us down. We got some traffic to our left. Oh, okay, so we're going to pass on the right here, which you're not supposed to do. But the left lane was full of cars. The right lane was clear. Are you still supposed to not do that? I don't know. Okay, so another lane change. There's really nobody in our way this time, so not all that eventful. Now, this guy wants to get over. Okay, so he did. Now, if he hadn't gotten over, my car would have just kept going, and I would have hit the brake just to let him in, and then I would have turned autopilot back on. So if I touch the brake, it turns autopilot completely off. Now I'm completely in control. But then you can just turn it back on. So we should, yep, we're getting out of the passing lane. And that's good. All right, so here's one of my annoyances with Navigate on autopilot. So when you put in the directions to my house, it wants to take this Kensington Road, and I don't like to do that. I like to just keep taking the highway and then take this highway over. So if it's doing something you don't like, it's as simple as doing this. Now it's not going to make automatic lane changes. It's not going to take exits. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to stay in your lane and keep your speed. So that's, that's part of why I was a little annoyed with the complaints. Like, I get the system's not perfect. I, I totally agree. It doesn't do everything the way a human would do it. But if you don't like it, you, one, just turn it off, or two, just disable it temporarily until you get past. So this is what I always do. I turn it off. I'm just watching this guy merging. I pass this. The car will then recalculate the route. And now I can turn it back on. There you go. So the exit I want to take is, is coming up. So we're going into the faster lane, I guess. That's fine with me. Um, and this is the way I want to go. Now the car will do what I want. So I wish the navigation had like lane cho or I wish the navigation had route choices so that you could um, tell it, don't take that route, take this route. Now that was a stupid lane change and I knew it was a stupid lane change and that's one I would have canceled, but I was talking. Okay, so our exit is coming up. Again, we have a warning here. The car is telling us way ahead of time that it eventually is going to change lanes. So here it goes. Turn signals on. We get over. So this exit is a, just a tiny bit complicated. It, it's not too bad. The car always does fine. So this is one of the kind of main things that was advertised with autopilot is highway to highway. It does everything. So the car is taking the exit for us. It's slowing down a little bit. Since we're going directly to another highway, it should do all of it. It should get us onto the next highway, merge on. I shouldn't need to do anything. That's not always the case. <laughs> Sometimes you got to take over, especially if it's a really tight bend that you're going through. Um, but this one I've done plenty of times, and it doesn't have a problem handling it. Watch now, of course, that I'm recording this video. It'll do something wrong. But that's okay. <laughs> so we could keep going straight. I want to take this car does it perfectly. So I'm going to turn this up. We want to be going faster. And we're to the next highway. I haven't done anything yet besides change the speed, which it would have done automatically now that it says 70. Um, but there we go. We went from one highway to the next. The car did everything and handled it great. Uh, no issues there. Is this a convertible Ford Taurus? What the heck am I looking at? That is wild. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. All right. All right, getting to the end here. One final exit for Navigate on Autopilot to handle. Perfect. Uh, and then it's unavailable in a few hundred feet. So we did have a few moments where Autopilot did get confused. Uh, it tried to change lanes and it wasn't a good time. Or we did have the one where it kind of cut the guy off. Um, but none of them were surprises. I saw it coming. Um, but I was allowing it to do those things just to kind of demonstrate. And so, so they, they were right in that the car can do those things. It can potentially cut somebody off. It can potentially pass on the right. But if you're using it the way it's supposed to be used, paying attention, actually driving your car, you really shouldn't run into any issues at all. Um, and when I'm using it in my daily driving, when I'm not pushing it to the limits just to kind of record a video, I don't have really have any of those problems. 
if it initiates a lane change that I don't like, I have enough time to just reach up here, click the little message to cancel, and then it stops what it's doing. Um, and if I'm having to do that more than once or twice, then like I showed in the video, I just click the little navigate on autopilot button and it stops doing that. It stays in the lane, holds my speed, and I don't have to think about it anymore. It's a great feature, it's not perfect, like I said, but I think the reaction from them saying that it's dangerous was just a little too much. Uh, if you're in your car driving and not paying attention, yeah, it's dangerous, but that's not a Tesla thing, that's a driving a car thing, you know? I could be in any car, and at least this car is gonna do a better job when I'm not paying attention than any other, you know, dumb car that doesn't have a driver assist system. So I hope you like this one. It was a little more serious. Uh, leave a comment below if you agree with me or disagree with me. Kind of uh, give me your thoughts on this. Do you think that Consumer Reports was out of line? I want to know what you think, whether you do or don't drive a Tesla. You know, you have kind of a different perspective if you're just seeing this from the outside uh, versus if you've experienced it. Uh, so let me know. I look forward to reading your comments and responding to those. And I'll see you in the next one.